All right, let's look at this grade 11 question on electricity. It's from November 2018. Here on the right hand side, I've got all the electricity formulas and here is the rest of the question here. Okay, so it says consider the circuit diagram below. The internal resistance of the battery and any resistance in the wires can be ignored. So this is grade 11 and grade 12, they'll start adding in the resistance of the battery. So for now it says to you calculate the value of resistor R if the total resistance of the circuit is 4.8 ohms. So they're telling you for this whole circuit with all four of these resistors, the total resistance is 4.8 ohms. But the problem here is that this is not a straightforward circuit. So what I suggest you do before you try this question is you straighten out the circuit and redraw it. So if we have a look here, here is my cell and if I take the electricity out the cell and I go, I get to over here. Here is the decision point. So let's draw this. Here we go. If I follow this route, I get to a 4 ohm resistor, well a 4 R resistor. And then I'm going to go all the way and return to the battery. Okay from that decision point. If I come back to the decision point and I choose the other route and I'm going to ignore the voltmeter for now, how do I get back to the battery? I have to go through this 3 ohm resistor, this 2 ohm resistor. Oh, it's not 2 ohms, it's a 3R, a 2R and an R resistor. So I've drawn the top branch going this way. Now I need to draw the bottom branch. So from my decision point here, I will go to a 3R resistor, a 2R resistor, a 1R resistor, and then these two will join up and return to the battery. Okay, so I just do this little thing over here to try and make my life easier so I can figure out what's going on on the circuit. And then when I have a look, where is my voltmeter? My voltmeter is here. Make sure your lines touch, okay? But this is just a rough diagram. So my voltmeter is only on this 2R resistor. And they are telling you that the total resistance of the circuit is 4.8 ohms. So if we want to work this out, we have to figure out what kind of a circuit we've got. Have we got a parallel circuit or have we got a series circuit? And the short answer is, I have this bottom part here, which is series, but it is in parallel with this 4 ohm resistor. So the resistance in the series part is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3, which will be 3R plus 2R plus R. So 3 and 2, if we add the coefficients, is 5 plus 1 equals 6R. So if we simplify the circuit even more, we could consider it to be something like this, a 4R resistor. My goodness, this is too small for my little handwriting. So let's put the 4R here. Okay. And then the effective resistance of the bottom part is 6R. It's not really like this, but this is what we would consider to be the effective resistance. So this is the series part, adds up to 6R, but altogether it is a parallel circuit, so we have to use the parallel formula. So 1 over RP equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So it said to you the total resistance is 4.8 ohms, so 1 over 4.8 is going to be 1 over 4R plus 1 over 6R. So now if you want to solve this, this is a fraction sum, we need a common denominator. The common denominator on this side is going to be 24R. So to get from 4R to 24R, I multiply by 6. To get from 6R to 24R, I multiply by 4. So I get 1 over 4.8. 1 over 4.8 equals 10 over 24 R, so 24R, where can I go with this? 24R equals 10 times 4.8, which is 48. So, oopsie, 
So R, R equals, my goodness, that was unintentional. Sorry. R equals 2. Look from the bottom here, 24R equals 48. So 48 divided by 24 is 2. So the value of R is 2. So that is the value of resistance R. So if we go back to the circuit here, okay, wait, no unit, no mark. So R equals 2 ohms. So if we go back here, this is 2 ohms. This is 2 times 2 is 4 ohms. This is 3 times 2. This is 6 ohms. And this one over here, 4 times 2 is 8 ohms. So that's what the real values of the resistors in the circuit are if we consider the R's. Okay, so now it says to you, calculate the reading on the voltmeter. Now remember the voltmeter is only on this part of the circuit here. So let's look at this part of the circuit here. This is 4 ohms and the voltmeter is only on this part of the circuit here which as you can recall is in the series part of the circuit. But it tells you that the current flowing through this particular resistor over here, see this is the 4R resistor, the current in this resistor is 1.8 amps. Okay, now we know that the voltage is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit, but the current is divided. So we can work out what the voltage is over this 4R resistor. This 4R is actually 4 times 2 is 8 ohms. So let's have a look here. Let's find the voltage because the voltage is the same everywhere. So if we go, let me rub this out and start in this little space over here. Let's change color pen as well so that we can clearly see which part of the question is which. Okay, so if we look at 12.2, we can work out, you can see it's five marks, it's not going to be one calculation. We can say for this one here, V equals IR. We know the current is 1.8. We know the resistance is four times R. So that is four times two. So my total volts in that resistor is going to be 1.8 times eight gives you 14.4. 4 volts. Okay, so this is fine. We know that this over here is going to be 14.4 volts. But the problem is they want us only to find the reading on this voltmeter here. So the, the story with the voltage is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit. It means that if I put another voltmeter over here, it would have to be over all three of those series things to be reading 14.4 volts. So what you have to now think about is that a series circuit is a potential divider and the current, I mean the voltage divides in the ratio of the resistors, okay? So I have over these three resistors here, this 3R, 2R and R, the total voltage will be 14.4. So in the series part of the circuit, I have a ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. This is not the actual um, value of the resistance. This is the ratio of the resistors. Okay, so the ratio of the resistors is 3 is to 2 is to 1. I am interested in this 2R1. So if I add my ratio up, 3 plus 2 is 5 plus another one is 6. six. So two sixths of the total voltage or the total potential, because remember a series circuit is a potential divider, two sixths of this is going to be what the voltage is. So if we have a look, two sixths of 14.4, if we put it into our calculator, we should end up with 4.8 volts. So my answer is going to be 4.8 volts and then obviously this one would have a bigger voltage value and the little r1 would have a smaller voltage value but the one on the 3r plus the 2r plus the r is going to add up 
to 14.4. Now it says to you, let's get a different color pen again. It says to you, calculate the energy converted in resistor 4R, that's this resistor over here, in two minutes. Okay, so the fact of the matter is resistor 4R is actually 4 times 2, 8 ohms. And energy and work, work done is the same as energy. So we look at one of these formulas with the W, work and energy, work done, energy used. So which one do we want to use? We know the R, we know the T, okay. We also, what have we been given in the question? In the question here, it gave you I. So let's use the one that gives us everything we've got in the question. So for 12.3, W equals I squared R delta T. So my current was given in the question 1.8 squared. The value of the resistance is 8. Remember it's 4R, so it's 4 times 2, which is 8. And then what about the delta T? It says two minutes, so we cannot put minutes in the question. We have to put seconds, so we multiply by 60 to turn the minutes into seconds. So we've got 1.8 squared times 8 times 120. We end up with 3110,4. And because work done is the same as energy, the answer, the unit of the answer is joules. Okay, so... Now they say to you, the 4R resistor is replaced with an ammeter. Now, what do we know about ammeters? They always go in series and they always have a low resistance. How will the reading on the voltmeter be influenced? So, what's going to happen? They're asking you about the voltmeter. Now, the voltmeter is down here. It is in the bottom parallel part of the circuit. But let's have a look here at the circuit. Let's rub out some of the scribblings on the circuit so we can see what's going on. What are we going to do? We are going to take this 4R and we are going to put an ammeter there. Now remember, this was part of a parallel circuit and an ammeter goes in series and it has a very low resistance. So what do you think happens to the current when it comes out the battery and it gets to this decision point here? It can easily go through this very low resistance ammeter or it can work very hard and go through the 3R, 2R and the R resistor before returning to the battery. So I always say to you, you're not allowed to say it in the exam, but current it is like a lazy child. It will always take the easiest path the easiest path is straight through the ammeter. So if all of the current is going through the ammeter, how many electrons can this voltmeter register? Absolutely hardly any. You are actually just making a short circuit with the putting by putting the ammeter there. So there can be no potential difference going through here. So at the very minimum, the reading on the ammeter is going to decrease. And the reason is, as I've just explained, that we have created a short circuit, it's in a parallel circuit, the ammeter's got a low resistance, and so the current is not going through the other branch of the parallel circuit, and if there's no current, there can't be any potential difference. And that is the end of the question.